Uh, well, at the outset, let me thank the organizers for giving me an opportunity to present here. Uh, this is a part of the collaborative work that is being undertaken by NCAER and University of Maryland, uh, which is uh, India Human Development Survey. Uh, and uh, these are uh, initial results. The, the full and final uh, data is not yet ready, but the results are quite suggestive. Uh, so let me begin. Uh, the first, uh, the whole idea of MGNREGA uh, and why uh, it actually got implemented and the struggle behind it is very well documented in the uh, book edited by Jean Dreza and Ritika Khera in the Battle for Employment Guarantee, which actually uh, uh, gives us a lot of insight into uh, the context of this uh, act and scheme per se. So the idea is, uh, is essentially the idea of employer of the last resort, which is quite uh, old idea in economic literature, especially during the Great Depression days in US and in across Europe and UK also, uh, where the public works programs were implemented uh, uh, so as to create a social safety net uh, and to hedge against uh, various kind of shocks. Uh, however, one must remember that perforce such programs are not in a substitute for the regular employment opportunities in the sense that they are supposed to create a social uh, 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 safety net strong enough uh, through the income and wealth redistribution effects as well as creation of employment so that those who are the vulnerable sections of the population are uh, prevented or are protected against uh, various shocks. So essentially it boils down to such kind of public works programs are essentially for marginalized and poor and in that context we must look at uh, NREGA and targeting issues. Uh, so the, the, the question uh, is a very specific question that we ask in this paper that is Narega well targeted towards those it is meant to serve that is the poorest the most discriminated against uh, that is SCs, STs and women and for those who have uh, lesser employment opportunities in the regular labor market uh, that is those who are less educated or uh, those who are living in backward areas. Uh, before I turn to the actual paper let me tell a uh, few things about India Human Development Survey because it's, it's uh, a new data set. Uh, basically, there are two rounds of this survey which were conducted. The first round was conducted in 2004-05 and the latest round was conducted in 2011-12. Uh, it's a nationally representative panel data set of about 42,000 households of which two-thirds are uh, rural households and one-third are urban households. Uh, it spans the entire country of 1,500 villages and 970 urban blocks in 33 states and union territories uh, with the exception of Andaman Nicobar. Uh, and round one households were uh, surveyed again in 2011-12, so it's a panel with a 90% 90, 90 recontact rate for rural households and the overall recontact rate is 83%. Uh, in this, the household splits are also included in the sample if uh, it's in the same village. And essentially, it's a multi-topic survey which includes data on income, expenditure, employment, education, and various other sociological uh, variables such as gender relations and uh, health and other facilities. Uh, round one is publicly available uh, on ICPSR website and it has been downloaded and used uh, by several researchers. Uh, the advantage of IHDS panel data vis-a-vis NSS or administrative data is that it's a prospective data in that sense having a pre and post Narega uh, uh, period it avoids some of the endogeneity problems that the other data sets uh, or the, the researchers might face. It's a unique kind of a income data in the sense that it uh, the household survey has information on household income as well as consumption expenditure and that helps us to identify the households who engage in multiple employment activities. It also has a module, separate module, which is a village module, and it allows us to compare essentially the developed and less developed kind of a villages, and thereby we can capture the geographical heterogeneity uh, in the data set. Uh, but uh, there's a caution uh, and disclaimer that I want to flag. IHDS is not representative at the state level. 
Uh, for the large states, uh, it is fairly representative, but for the smaller states, it's not representative. So that's a caveat that I want to put. Uh, specifically, the Narega sample that we have used comprises of about 20, 27,000 households. And as I said earlier, it's a preliminary data and not uh, the final uh, version. Uh, in terms of quality and robustness check, if you want to see, then the NSS 66 round, uh, which happened in 2009-10, documents that the participation rate for Narega is around 25%. And for the IHDS, the same statistics is 24.57%. Uh, uh, so both of these uh, differ from administratory data, which uh, tends to kind of uh, give a higher sample, uh, higher participation rate. Uh, some of the descriptive statistics to put in place, if you see, uh, the first is the Narega and caste. Uh, so if you see the diagram, then clearly it emerges that uh, for the SC households and ST households, there are 36% of SC households and roughly 29% of the households, ST households, who are participating in uh, Narega. Uh, this is just a, 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 a quick uh, kind of a summary so as to know whether uh, the targeting is actually working or not, but this is not uh, uh, analytically robust. Uh, if we consider the religion and if we divide the population into Hindu, Muslim and others, then the descriptive statistics tells us that for Hindus as well as for Muslims, the uh, participation rate is fairly similar. For Hindus it is 25.42, for Muslims it is 21.23. Uh, if we divide the population by income quintiles, then uh, this is very interesting which we can observe that uh, clearly the top two quintiles who represent the rich households are opting out or self-selecting themselves out of the uh, Narega and as it should be as it's a scheme which is, tar uh, which is supposed to target uh, poor and marginalized section. So that fact is clearly borne out in these descriptive statistics uh, with the income quintiles. The methodology that we have used to investigate the issue is fairly uh, simple but pertinent for uh, we ask the research questions at three levels for the individual, what happens within the household, who is more likely to participate, at the household level, what is the participation and also we factor in the, uh, the village conditions and we try to gauge as to which villages are more likely to participate and which are not. So we have separate models for individuals which essentially have the within family fixed effects model uh, and for the households it's a village level random effects model that is used. Uh, so within the household who has chosen to participate and we actually ask who are the more vulnerable and unprotected and disadvantaged in the labor market, women and older members. So how do they fare uh, uh, as far as Narega participation is concerned? Uh, and we compare this with participating in all other type of activities so as to get an idea as to how Narega is faring against uh, other work types. Uh, the dependent variable being the individual participation, yes, no kind of a variable and uh, other independent controls are age, gender and marital status of the uh, member. So here if we look at then clearly a uh, few things are in order. Uh, for females, uh, we see that the coefficient uh, is uh, with a negative sign and significance in both uh, Narega participation as well as in any work participation. So clearly women are not at par with uh, men, but uh, if we compare it uh, amongst these types, that is Narega and non-Narega or any work participation, then the disadvantage suffered by women in Narega is clearly smaller as compared to uh, what they have in uh, any work participation. Uh, so, so in a way we can actually say that uh, because there is a reservation uh, implied in the scheme, inbuilt in the scheme and also the provision of equal wage for men and women, so this actually helps in uh, 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 women participating in Narega and if we look at, at the broader context that uh, overall labor force participation if we see the NSS results, then uh, we note that vim, uh, women participation in the overall labor force is declining as NSS documents. So, uh, so the possibility is that Narega has actually halted that skid uh, down the line, which is uh, uh, in this, which are, which is clear in this table. Uh, if we look at the age composition and age cohorts, then uh, again we see that uh, it is positive for 
the middle age groups that is 30 to 59 uh, and if we compare it with any other work participation the effect is not that strong as it is uh, uh, as we say that the role of potential age discrimination and emphasis on physical strength is, is possible but uh, not so much in uh, Narega work and hence it is the the middle age category from 30 to 59 that seems to be participating more in uh, Narega. Uh, moving to the next question of which households participate, uh, essentially the question is do poor and marginalized households have higher participation rates, uh, is it SCSTs uh, or the others? Uh, is it from those who are from lowest income quintiles? So essentially we use uh, round one data as a control to see, so those who were poor earlier in first round, what happens to them in the next round. And in case of uh, Muslims, uh, holding other factors constant, uh, how do they fare? Uh, in terms of occupational pattern and groups, if we see, we have used uh, occupation from pre-Narega uh, period, that is 2004-05 first round. And uh, so the question is really who participates more, are, are the farmers more likely to participate or the agricultural wage laborers or non-farm uh, wage workers or any other type of workers. Uh, and the model which we uh, actually use the random effects model and uh, uh, the dependent var variable being household Narega participation with the host of controls of caste, religion, income in pre-Narega period, sources of income in pre-Narega period, village infrastructure, number of adult members in the family, uh, state of residence, ownership of consumer durables and literacy characteristics. So, so we've tried to be uh, as robust as we could uh, and uh, this is actually uh, used to adjust for unobserved variation in the uh, program across villages which could be correlated with uh, certain individual characteristics. So if we look at the household level participation then clearly the picture emerges that SCs and STs have shown a positive sign with a significance at 5% and they have higher participation rates than other households controlling for uh, other uh, household characteristics such as income education and place of residence. But uh, the descriptors actually showed that as far as religion and Narega participation is considered, uh, it was fairly similar but once we actually run the uh, regressions then it is clear that uh, they are not uh, as equally likely participating as uh, other religions. Now the question is that why do SCSTs have higher participation rates and uh, uh, not Muslims? Uh, could there be a potential exclusion of uh, uh, SCSTs or because the act does not specify Muslims specifically as it does for SCST categories, uh, it is still, uh, so that's a, that's a theory which, which needs to be explored but uh, this is what it can be flagged from uh, religion variable. Uh, if we look at the income quintiles, then uh, we see that uh, the bottom second quintile is participating more. Uh, however, the coefficient is not that uh, high and uh, the significance is also at 10%. Uh, so, so we see that there is low income sensitivity to participation except at the highest income level. So certainly top two quintiles are actually opting out of the uh, uh, Narega uh, uh, scheme but we cannot be so sure uh, for the bottom 60 we don't see that uh, difference between the categories. And uh, the word of caution is that we have controlled for education and asset ownership which uh, are actually generally correlated with the income so that is uh, another uh, disclaimer that I want to make. Uh, if we look at the sources of uh, income and occupation, then households participating in agricultural wage work in pre-Narega period are most likely to participate as you can see, it's significant with a positive uh, sign. Uh, well, agricultural wage work, wage work is not that attractive, uh, uh, it, is, it is a low paying work and usually therefore uh, Narega offers an attractive option uh, as generally Narega wages tend to be higher than the agricultural wage rate. Uh, but this is not the case for other wage work that is a non-agricultural uh, wage work and therefore it suggests potential concerns for availability of labor during harvesting season and in some of the earlier papers which, we pre which were presented here the aspect of seasonality was highlighted and that is also to be remembered while looking at uh, these numbers. 
in case of villages, we see that the less developed villages are clearly more likely to participate uh, in Narega as against uh, uh, the developed villages. Uh, a better infrastructure is associated generally with lot of alternate employment opportunities, which means that people don't have to depend on Narega per se, and they can explore other opportunities in the labor market. Uh, therefore, uh, we see here that the less developed villages are actually the ones who are benefiting from Narega as against the better developed villages. Uh, this is based on the, the classification is based on essentially the infrastructural facilities provided in villages uh, and uh, the results are in front of you. So uh, to conclude, uh, which individuals in a household are more likely to participate? They are the women and elderly who are more likely to participate than any other wage work. Uh, which households are more likely to participate? It is clearly uh, targeting for SC and SC households seems to work here. But Muslims are uh, more likely to be excluded. Also for income, uh, those in bottom three quintiles are more likely to participate while the rich households are clearly opting themselves out of this uh, scheme. And in case of villages, it is the uh, least developed villages who are more likely to participate in uh, Narega. So with that, uh, I conclude and it looks like targeting is working. Thank you. Great. Thank you.